What if your briefcase had a secret? What if instead of reams of paper, inside was a full-featured computer? Introducing Zorba, a rugged portable computer for the new millennium. Featuring 7-inch CRT monitor, two 5 and a quarter double-sided double-density disk drives, and detachable keyboard with two-foot coiled cord. Available now for just $15.95. Zorba, it's worth it. Zorba Portable Computer. The expert's choice. Vsauce, Kevin here, with a 34-year-old computer that took me three weeks, 30 emails with three vintage computer experts, and a special, oops, special request from an eBay store exclusively dedicated to selling old floppy disks just to get it to play Zork. This is the Modular Micros Zorba 7. One of the earliest mobile computers, its 22 pound weight is 11 times heavier than a current MacBook, but it cost about the same at $1,595. It beeped. Except that after adjusting for inflation, that $1,595 is actually $4,000 today. Zorba. So in 1984, the equivalent of four grand got you four megahertz which at the time was four times the clock speed of Apollo 11's guidance computer, but was about 996 megahertz short of being able to run Flappy Bird. So what can you do with this? Skyrim, well, 1977 Skyrim, a game called Zork. All right, so let's do this. Let's pop this in and check it out. There's the disc, hit enter, and error, and error, error. It's, it's literally just gonna keep doing this. This is where I was stuck for weeks. This computer, I'm just gonna reset it because it's not gonna stop beeping. Okay, and we're back. This computer will not run software without very specific boot disks because it has no built-in operating system. Zorba was one of the last 8-bit portable computers running CPM, an operating system which required booting from a disk before loading any software. Computers that ran CPM could run virtually any software at that time since it was industry standard, which it would have remained except the company who developed CPM failed to sign a legal agreement with IBM to use it on their brand new 16-bit computers. So IBM went with Microsoft instead and MS-DOS conquered PCs. Whoops. The problem with my Zorba is I bought it without any disks. Only 6,000 Zorbas were ever made. So finding one that still functions and has the system disks is tough. Also finding anyone who A, knows how Zorba works and B, has the ability to make new Zorba disks was difficult. The disk with all the errors was from some guy who didn't know what he was doing. But a guy named Retro System Rescue did know what he was doing and came through and made me this system disk, which does work. Check it out. Then Zorba is alive. It has a built-in 7-inch CRT screen, 4 megahertz CPU, 64K bytes of RAM, detachable keyboard, and a weatherproof protective carry case. These computers were referred to as luggables, and they're the direct ancestors of laptops. It was designed for business professionals to do spreadsheets and word processing, but it became capable of doing world processing. In 1977, the same month Star Wars came out, four guys from MIT turned a side project into one of the most influential and forgotten pieces of gaming history. Zork was the first game to implement gameplay elements that seem so self-evident that we don't even think about them now. Okay, let's load Zork. Now that the operating system is loaded in disk drive A, we have to access disk drive B, which is where Zork won is loaded and now that B is accessed, we just type in Zork1 and return. I messed that up. Don't mess this up. 
very particular. And there we go. You are standing in an open field west of a white house with a boarded front door. There is a small mailbox here. So one of the gameplay elements that we don't think about today is objects having weight. A solid gold bar weighs more than a newspaper, and the total number of objects carried depends on the weight of their contents. Think Dark Souls. Or that items themselves can have contents, meaning it's not just a bottle, it's a bottle that must be opened because there's water inside that you need. And the capacity of containers is also considered so a paper bag won't hold as much as a bucket. Zork also featured gaming's first real villain with its own personality. In his book, Twisty Little Passages, Nick Montfort identifies the thief as gaming's first memorable character. And the monstrous Gru, responsible for one of the 28 ways you can die in Zork, became an early meme. You can still find you are likely to be eaten by a Gru t-shirts on Amazon. Zork's creators were inspired by a groundbreaking game called Colossal Cave Adventure. Adventure was a text-based journey through a fictional underground cave based on the actual mammoth caves in Kentucky. And researchers with access to high-end computers were in love with it. Dave Lebling, one of the Zork creators, said, For two weeks, all work on the ARPANET stopped. The precursor to the internet was delayed because of a video game. But adventure was too simplistic for them. The parser only allowed for two word commands like go north or take shovel. They wanted to create a dynamic, immersive text adventure that could handle nuanced full sentences and had a sense of humor. Zork players could type full commands like swing bottle at troll, and they'd be met with responses such as trying to attack a troll with a glass bottle is suicidal. To distribute the game, Zork partnered with Personal Software, company with an impossibly generic name, PS was responsible for VisiCalc, the first ever spreadsheet program. VisiCalc was one of the first pieces of software to lure businesses into computers, and Zork was along for the ride. It's funny to think about now, but at that time, people had never seen a game this detailed. It wasn't even like playing a game, it was like playing a book. But there was no in-game map or strategy guide let alone walkthroughs or YouTubing. Zork players spent weeks making their own detailed maps of the world's dungeon, items, mazes, and NPCs. Although they eventually published a hint book printed in invisible ink to avoid spoilers, which now goes for 150 bucks. The result was connecting a complex story directly to each player's imagination. Without graphics to influence your concept of the game, Everything you visualized came from your own thoughts. And like modern franchises like The Witcher or Mass Effect, players made choices and those choices had ramifications. They had agency in a fantasy world unique to them. Zork was you. Only you. Zork's rich world model helped pave the way for everything from Zelda to Resident Evil. but. Very few people seem to talk about Zork. So, what happened? Zork sold nearly half a million copies over the next five years and helped fuel the first round of the personal computer boom. But computers got more powerful. Companies like Sierra invested early in graphics-based games, which were about to take over. Suddenly, the pioneering genre of text adventure games became an echo of the past. In 1985, Super Mario Bros. revolutionized home gaming on the NES, and that system was so legendary that Nintendo recently revived it with the NES Classic and sold over 2 million units. No one is reviving Zorba. By the time Zorba came out in 1984, it was pretty much dead luggable walking. Apple's Macintosh introduced the GUI with its famous Super Bowl ad, and IBM's DOS-based PC Jr. came out at an affordable $999. Zorba was trapped in time. But Zorba was part of the initial wave of being able to take a computer with you. Zork was ground zero. Oh, this is really hard to do. This thing, 
No wonder no one bought this thing. Let's take this thing with me. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Ugh. All right. Zork was ground zero for complex storytelling. And now every day we walk around with a computer in our pocket capable of turning our lives into digital stories. Your phone is Zorba. Your life is Zork. And the decisions we make can lead to Gru or Gold. And as always, thanks for watching. Zorba, it's worth it. Cool. Oh, this thing's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Woo.